Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. I hope I'm right. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. The word bring you out there is the word deliverance. I will deliver you from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments so we see different expressions here that relates to deliverance the Lord is saying I will bring you out from their burdens I will read you out of their bondage I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment why this is because of what happened in chapter 1 and verse 11. Let's go to chapter 1 and 11. Same Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 11. It says, Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. Listen carefully. The purpose of the deliverance in chapter 6 is because of a situation that we find in chapter 1. That therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses, all of the gods of Egypt. So they were, they were subject to a system of labor, a system of bondage and a burden. What was the assignment? To build cities for other gods. Are we together? They were mandated as an act of affliction to build treasure cities where they kept the 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 booties that they had gotten from war and from oppressing neighboring nations and then to also build different tabernacles places of rest for all their gods and their idols and the lord said that i will bring you deliverance so before there is need for deliverance there must have been a system of bondage are we together that subjects men that subjects territories that subjects both animate and inanimate things to some sort of danger some sort of oppression and so on and so forth are we together let's look at colossians chapter one paul is teaching the church in Colossae. colossians chapter one verse 13 and 14 and then i would like to teach something very briefly here before we move on it says who hath delivered us talking about jesus now who hath delivered us from the power of darkness everybody say power of darkness notice the bible didn't just say he delivered us from darkness he delivered us from the power of darkness that means darkness is powerful darkness is a force it is very unwise to believe that um, all of these spiritual forces are not powerful 
we only say they are powerless relative to the superiority of God's intelligence and the power that is now in motion through the Christ are we together when you are contrasting darkness relative to the excellency of God's power his all surpassing victory then it is valid to consider Satan and all his cohorts as powerless but relative to the spiritual advantage the plane from which these spirits operate it is very childish and immature to believe that they do not wield any kind of power and force on their own even a normal human being who can access the realm of the spirit any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm has an advantage over one who does not sustain that uh, that ability are we together now i have taught you that any dimension you can access outside of the three-dimensional realm will provide you an advantage over the natural person scientists would tell us that even lower animals that we call lower have the ability to perceive danger and perceive reality that the normal man who is unrefined are we together cannot perceive is that true we see dogs we see animals respond to people some of them have very superior sense organs these are beings that are not empowered by any kind of spirit whatsoever yet they wield an advantage so it is it is i'm, I'm just buttressing on this to help us understand because you see one of the greatest challenges with the body of christ is we just copy everything we know we never take out time to allow the spirit of revelation to break down the truths that have been passed down from generation to generation just because we read it in a book and a senior man of god advocated it or certain people that represent pillars to the body most of them had the understanding but most of us just receive it as head knowledge and we teach it in bible schools so most believers just have the chaff of that knowledge there is no substance that backs up their conviction are we together so darkness is powerful paul is not ashamed to tell us in fact here's how jesus said it he said behold i give you power are we together that's luke 10 19 can we just run there and then return back to Colossians? Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give you power. Listen, the word power there is not the Greek word dunamis. It's the word exousia. It's the word authority, right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an authorization to legislate rather than the ability to by yourself cause change. Are we together? Behold, I give you exousia, authority to tread upon serpents, and upon scorpions and over how many all the power jesus himself is acknowledging that the enemy has power but that he has given you an ability to manifest and legislate above that power and then he says nothing shall by any means hurt you the only reason why nothing shall hurt you is because you are operating from a dimension that is higher than the existing that means if something is hurting you it means you are not accessing and working with that power or you do not have knowledge on how to put it to work are we together now god bless you so back to colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 i hope we are together who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and then the bible says hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son 14 in whom we have redemption through the blood even the forgiveness of sins so he's telling us the basis for that translation that the the possibility to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son has happened on the basis of redemption and that by the blood are we together now so salvation is a form of deliverance the salvation that has been given believers today that we enjoy the bible does not just call it redemption alone the bible calls it deliverance what then is deliverance write this down i did my best to scrabble an intelligent definition that will capture everything that i believe the word of god 
um, says about deliverance. So let's, let's try and see if my definition makes sense. Ready? Deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Christ or Jesus Christ. Don't worry, take it gradually. I will repeat myself. Deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm going to continue. I'm just breaking so that you write. Let's take it again. Deliverance is a system for experientially, underline the word experientially, establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. Can I continue? over satan comma demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan demons and all the powers of darkness over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives by this definition we see that deliverance for a believer and the scriptural approach to deliverance is much more than the activity of physical exertion like a present day fight Deliverance is concerned with establishing, making a reality that has been finished to become your experience here and now. Are we together? So that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Christ Jesus over Satan, demons, and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives. I wrote something small here that deliverance um, and then by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ today is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it listen carefully our approach to the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare has to do with establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting to create it it's important that you have this understanding and this revelation alone will make all the difference in your approach to the subject of deliverance and the subject of spiritual warfare. That you and I should approach the subject of deliverance from a perspective that seeks to establish and manifest the victory that is already wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ rather than an attempt to physically exert energy to fight and win as though it was a product of your own exertion. I think this is this in itself. I can dwell all night explaining this because this may be the reason why many, many well-meaning individuals and by extension deliverance ministries get little or no victory out of the the abundance of the physical exertions many of us here may be victims of that experience so we're not talking about a state here where you fight for victory in terms of physically confronting satan one on one as it were i will tell you where that revelation came from are we blessed so say after me deliverance for the believer has to do with establishing and manifesting authority over darkness rather than fighting for it are you getting the point now let me dramatize something here please come doctor come watch this you stand here and um hold my book this is your inheritance this is your possession please look up i want to dramatize something that will help us you stand here and then ah they are all ladies where are the gentlemen sam come 
now watch this the Bible says and you have to understand this is where I think many people find confusion when the Bible when the Bible speaks look at this very carefully God speaks from the standpoint of eternity he does not speak as if he's talking within the frame of time are we together so in the speakings of God he always speaks with the expression of completion which is not a lie but then the dynamics of converting the prophetic realities that have been finished in Christ to now become the experience of the saints is where there is confusion are we together so the Bible tells us from the foundation of the earth the lamb was slain but there are still people going to hell today are we together if the Lord is to talk to you now if you were to see Jesus Jesus will look at you and tell you you should not be crying financially because you are walking in abundance that's how he talks but then you will think that he's being rude and sarcastic to you because at the point he's talking to you you may not even have five naira he cannot speak otherwise his his viewpoint spans he's not dimensional in his approach if he breaks himself to be dimensional it's an act of his mercy to help man understand him are we together that's why he's called alpha omega the word and there was just an expression to help us comprehend he is both the beginning and the end so to him there is nothing like beginning and end in his dimension that does not exist are you getting my point now so god can speak to you and say emeka finish the house by tomorrow whereas you don't even have land that's god speaking emeka finish the house by tomorrow and as at the time he's talking your landlord is waiting with a policeman in front of you and god will never talk about the landlord emeka i have given you your house and your key you will even see it in a vision god giving you key and you say thank you and then wake up from the vision with a, a rude knock from the door by an angry landlord now how do i reconcile what i have seen because god will not change he speaks once it is only you that hears twice the first hearing is the hearing of the flesh the second hearing is now the hearing of the spirit that brings understanding once have i spoken but you need to hear twice because the first hearing is from a carnal point but then the holy spirit now helps you to have the ear that the bible says he that hath an ear the second kind of ear you now hear from the spirit the hearing that brings understanding that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing but there is a superior hearing hearing now not just by your senses by the word of god are you understanding what i'm teaching you now so this guy is now confused and he's saying in the realm of the spirit the lord spoke to me and said i have given you abundance yet nothing is happening and then the lord appears to you and you're trying to say oh lord look at all the demons and the witches and then the lord tells you something like my grace is sufficient or my victory is still in force and you wake up and you are like oh god how can you be speaking like this whereas in experience that's what paul was trying to teach the church in hebrew he was quoting from psalm 5 what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him the bible says you have made him lower than elohim are we together you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing that you did not leave anything under his feet but he creates a dimension he said but as it is today we do not yet see experience so you must be able to balance between the prophetic communications of the spirit the prophetic communications of the word and the experiential manifestation of the same in your life otherwise you will die like a chicken quoting the word of god between the prophetic speakings of god and the manifestation in your life there is a mystery that connects them and those who have this are the ones who become possessors it is your possession in christ but it takes an understanding of what to do to make it your possession here forever oh lord thy word is settled where it never said in your life thy word is settled in heaven 
it will take engaging these mysteries to make the word settled in your life ah your help has come this this is already a deliverance for someone because for many years you kept jumping oh my god i see victory jesus said it is finished everything is all right wonderful amazing my life is full of beauty and glory you are not lying but after 10 years 15 years your father said this thing and while he was saying it sickness was eating him up till he died i, I don't want you to feel bad i'm not trying to be sarcastic are we together you said this yourself and after 10 years there's nothing in your life that demonstrates the victory of christ and some out of that frustration will just say this is a lie no it's not a lie forever your word is settled but to know how to make it our experience one of the mysteries that have been allocated by the wisdom of god to make spiritual realities that are established in the christ to manifest in our life is called the mystery of deliverance are you getting the point now it is not the only kingdom mystery i've taught you many of them we are approaching one of them now this gentleman wants to possess his possession this is a son of jacob he's read obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 he's believed are we together now because the bible says whoever believes our reports the arm of the lord will be made manifest in his life now this brother believes but every time standing between him and that inheritance just turn to face me sam is an obstacle this brother has read in the bible that we have been translated colossians 1 13. it didn't say we will be the bible says we have been but he's seen something that is is a cause in his life watch this this guy knows the word of god i hope you understand that he has believed he's a worker in church and he has seen that every time people get to the edge the edge of breakthrough something happens now he said in the name of jesus i don't believe this i am exempted and to his shock regardless of that confession his life is still a victim of it that thing happens as if the thing didn't hear him are you getting what i'm saying now please listen very carefully okay this guy comes from a family where everybody is barren i'm sorry sorry for this are we together everyone is barren and now he makes up his mind no it is god that makes everyone a fruitful i mean he can make the wilderness to be fruitful you know children are heritage from the lord now he has confessed that he has done that well and it is true but in experience now he gets married and to his shock he finds out that his wife cannot get pregnant and he said no the devil is just joking let me just release my faith and you watch what happens one month becomes one year becomes two years becomes decades becomes 20 years and the man is angry by 75 and he's no longer believing in jesus and when you come to him as a zealous young man what giant from koinonia man of god since i was blind say if you don't get out of here i will slap you i spent 60 years forcing the word to work my conclusion is that god alongside all the scammers called preachers are liars some of us that person i just described may be your father may be your mother they will show you pictures of them and reinhard bonke when he was young and tell you i and tear it in your presence and say i don't believe all that junk again the frustration that comes you come from a family that is full of poverty and goodness you found the truth and you are happy you are rejoicing over it and all of a sudden you find out that you are now a graduate and your elder sisters are looking at you and say we graduated 15 years ago none of us the highest among us just got a contract job for one week and it was over and you come and say it's because you know how arrogant we are young people when we are just touching revelation we mock at others and laugh and say oh sisters it's because of the church you are going to me i'm going to koinonia wait and see what happens then you are a graduate and you celebrate the first christmas as a graduate with no job it touches you and you pretend i don't know i think god is working something powerful after you dance and sing and do what you know to do by five years you now sit with them in a discussion and you are like ah, ah. so this this thing is true this is why my mother was not happy this is why my father was not happy 
this series is saving you many of you many of you are already going through what i'm saying now and if you don't open your eyes and your ears to listen to the way out you will be very frustrated how about men of god like our sister shared who come from terrible families with idol worship and then they get born again filled with the holy spirit and begin to walk in strange miracles and start a ministry and say oh god god forbid i mean i used to be from a family of idol worship now i'm free and the guy begins his ministry after five years he finds out that the members go down everything goes down an attack comes on him and the ministry and he goes to tell his uncle and the uncle laughs and say why do you think i stopped being a pastor because i was once a pastor were you told he said no so well let me educate you i was once a pastor the crusade that happened in this city i was the chairman organizing committee the same thing that happened you would try to argue and say uncle my own is not like your own he said you he says it's the same thing it's there and then many of you now just like i was stand and you are confused you say no no let me go back to the bible and you still see it there and have translated us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us not will translate and have translated us many of you rush and come to us men of god and say sir i read here and have translated me i believed everything you said why is my life like this listen to what we tell you you don't have faith or you really don't believe it i if you be, look at me i'm rich i'm entering a jeep so he said i'm okay money can deceive to think just because you have a jeep and you have a nice watch you are free no there are many other dimensions you don't have to be delivered to be rich there are many people under yokes of darkness that are millionaires so be careful lest you use money the reason is because money has a very funny way of making your needs met so it can lie to you to think just because you don't see any obvious need yet you are free we have used money for a long time in the body to mean that i am free and say what's the proof look at my estate look at five cars look at a flourishing church does that look like someone under oppression I, 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 I. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, ay, 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 Ebenezer, my helpers, ay, 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 Ebenezer. reading volumes of books i went to almost every bookstore i could find and gathered books i read books to prepare myself on fire i was seeing the power of god move through my life i was having encounters and then to my greatest shock in the midst of that spiritual height demons come to me regardless i mean i started quoting scriptures from secondary school you would receive awards there were 52 scriptures if you could quote they would give you an award i don't know how many times i got that award and you would think how then should i hide the word in my heart to quote 52 scriptures every year new ones i'm not talking of old ones i could quote chapters of the bible and here comes demons into my room and i'm shouting in jesus name the blood of jesus and they are not moving i'm saying in the name of jesus i'm a child of god and they are not moving <sighs> who will i tell this who will believe me god are you have you suddenly become weak listen when you see me just stand to talk and demons are crying find out what happened i want to show you where the problem is these demons will press my neck the anointing didn't leave me the anointing is still there the same way Elisha died of sickness with the healing anointing still in his bones why didn't the anointing work while he was deteriorating to death 
yet the anointing raised a dead body who didn't have faith the dead body was not begging please raise me just it came in contact with bones couldn't the anointing bring back flesh like ezekiel 37 because we know it's a possibility so why didn't the anointing bring back the prophet again there are mysteries in this kingdom what you do not know you can argue to your detriment it will smash you into pieces like it's happening to many people we are just not honest to confront truth until we find light for me i i pray that god will make you like me i don't hear yes sir i keep searching until the truth is found many of you you see when the holy spirit refuses to allow an answer satisfy you is because there is a grace in that area he wants you to reveal to the body so you come to a man of god you come to me or anybody and we just give you explanations uh, to manage our ego and the holy spirit to say no no with all honor that's not the answer he's telling you find out so that you can help someone if i didn't pass through what i passed through now i probably will wave this teaching like many are waving and say look let's just focus on jesus and you are focusing on jesus but you are seeing that something is wrong everything the word of god declares is true it is the system for accessing it we do not know and what we have been taught is not wrong but is largely incomplete this series is to give you the balance you hear testimonies of people already look at the pastors with their churches look at the gentlemen that came someone from us just gets up another person just sends 4.5 you think the person doesn't have relatives in need doesn't he have brothers and sisters who are looking for thirty thousand, and he can't help them and then come somewhere i told you you're what Just follow me by now this brother is frustrated oh god give me my possession and he comes and he says man of god i'm still waiting and i said don't worry abraham waited 25 years what what are you complaining about your small boy come on just be paid and i start getting angry you are getting rude you are challenging my anointing my anointing is angry with you i will curse you you see that and the brother leaves me quietly and goes back and he knows something is wrong I'm not being sarcastic I love the body listen carefully there must be an answer to this that answer is what will bring about the experience of possessing your possession that even even the critic in your life will know that the hand of God this brother has caught this this sister has caught this I prayed to God eh? and I told God I said by the time Lord we finish this series let us hear of testimonies that people will stand up and say no this is this is if not because the person sharing it is there we will think it's a lie or stage manage I told you last week you can know that deliverance has happened to a person and a family by the speed that's where you know that those realities have been piled up in the spirit for many years and it's usually an avalanche overnight doors liftings all kinds of things happen do you believe that a woman who should have had six children and has been barren for six years or for 10 years or 20 years you think it's one child that will come at once right. by the time god shifts that barrier you will be surprised the kind of testimonies that will surprise you you believe that a man that has been grounded by witchcraft for decades the only testimony he will get is a new job that gives him thirty thousand. when will he recover no that's not the kind of testimony that follows deliverance the kind of testimony that follows deliverance is a sign and a wonder God makes a statement that I can in delivering you restore the years the canker worm the palmer worm you should be married 20 years ago but then I move and give you triplets two times six children at once but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance whatever it is and when that happens the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah so this brother is standing 
then he takes an aggressive step watch this and then his eyes is open in the spirit watch this and he sees a spirit appear to him and tell him you will never make it but the bible says behold i give you power so satan where did you even get the audacity to show up in my room remember your room is anointed remember there's a bottle of anointing oil in that room don't forget remember there's a communion set in that room are you getting what i'm saying remember while the demon is talking to you a bible is on your bed have you forgotten sometimes a worship song is even playing yet he shows up no invitation he didn't knock the door and talks nonsense to you and all of a sudden he leaves who will i tell this to i can't tell apostle because I'm, i will keep quiet and that's how many of us have been keeping quiet as a man of god you finish preaching in a crusade and go back in the night and a spirit comes to molest you to even sleep with you you get up in the morning who will i tell this embarrassing thing and while you are sitting someone comes for counseling counseling number one man of god there is a demon that comes to sleep with me every night you almost want to run away because that's your own experience too it will shock you that you will lay hands on the person and he will start manifesting and be free and you just wave the person and then return back and say my god now oh god who will deliver me Ay 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 Ebeniza Ebeniza Ay 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 Ebeniza my pastor Hallelujah Please go and sit down guys let's talk now why why does it look like there is a an extreme difficulty for the saints to make manifest the realities remember the bible says he that did not spare his son are we bible students that he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us will he not with him freely freely mark the word freely give us how many things then the bible says that they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness what is their heritage they shall reign yet we do not see this thing happening that means something is wrong so deliverance is one of the mysteries that was allocated by the wisdom remember the bible says that it should be made to principalities and powers the manifold not one fold manifold the multifaceted wisdom of god deliverance is one of the expressions of the multifaceted wisdom of god so deliverance is concerned with experientially establishing and manifesting the victory and authority that we have in the christ rather than physically fighting for it let me tell you where this fighting mentality came from and of course the bible says we should fight the fight of faith and all of that but i mean this kind of fight have you seen people go to sleep and they tell you ah i i fought and this and in a dream you saw yourself fighting the victory was almost there are we together then somebody woke you you get up with anger and annoyance and say i was about to, to stab the last snake and you woke me what kind of you are you are a wicked person watch this and then you go back to sleep again and sometimes the battle continues it is because of the way spiritual things act themselves that we have believed that just because in a dream or in a vision are we together some of you even wake up from that encounter feeling physically exerted so because of that scenario of acting we now believe that warfare is about physically trying to fabricate victory regardless of what you see or the way the expressions come in the spirit the word of god remains true 
that Christ has won the victory are you are you with me now that's where the confusion comes from and especially for those who work very strongly in the prophetic ministry they have helped in no way to amplify this com this co this confusion because what you see if not balanced with mental transformation and a good word base you will confuse people i can stand right now and make her stand and look at doctor in a vision and in that vision i can be seeing him inside a pit are we together and now i say doctor you are in a pit it's not a lie but that is just a prophetic symbolism to mean bondage are we together by the time i engage in whatever mystery the victory may show as him coming out from the pit so over many years of seeing different scenarios i may now write a book or i may now propose a theology are we together where people now start physically fighting to manifest their victory and this is why satan reigns over us because he's a master of the sense realm he knows that what you can see will challenge you let me ask you a question what happened to you last week with your night prayer are you not shocked at the level of attack that amplified you see that it happened for many of us right i told you it will happen because satan is the master of the sense realm you wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again some of you as soon as you finish you went back in fact for some of you that activity has been on break since you you became on serious with god but now that you just started a little prayer all of a sudden it came now let me tell you satan will use your senses and tell you the word of god claims this if god were so powerful where is it then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say kai that means let me go back to sleep in jesus name i must go back for the battle to come you are already defeated there's no possibility of victory under that condition in this kingdom the only instrument listen carefully the only the saints don't fight our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us the force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come peter says if it be thou listen carefully now bid me come and jesus says come peter gets up and started walking on water are we together now do you think while peter was walking on the water the water stopped being boisterous it still continued but it's just that because his focus was on jesus are we together that connection so the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs it was on the gaze of jesus are we together now the moment peter didn't stop walking on water he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down for as long as his gaze was on jesus whatever the storm did now he's looking at jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet it was still boisterous but he was surprised that the water was not moving him the element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of jesus not his ability to walk well for as long as his legs remain but he turned his attention the bible said he saw that's what satan wants you to see satan is a master over the sense realm if he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you are we together god bless you thank you doctor we discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that satan uses that demons use all occults all spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants 
covenant we discussed it last week i'm just giving us a quick review number one covenants a covenant is the most powerful of the three because i told you that a covenant is a system of authorization and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this dr sean is here with his wife shade are we together if i ask doctor and i say sir i want to come to your house and he says no then i turn to his wife and say shade i want to come to your house and she says yes the covenant of marriage are we together if obeyed properly i have a right to come to that house and if he quarrels me and say i thought i didn't invite you i say no your wife who has also become one with you allowed me you see why covenants are powerful because when you see satan veto certain things about you and comes is because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him are you getting what i'm saying now the same way in israel today i am not aware of many israelis who have come by themselves to call upon jehovah the god of abraham isaac and jacob in fact if you go to visit israel those who take christians on a tour the jewish people are shocked that christians are crying when they see some of these monuments to them is tourism they are waiting to be paid and they see it just come so this is the cave where my savior laid and you kneel down and the jew there is in shock what kind of people are these you are being emotional you go near the wailing wall and you are crying and wailing for your sins and choking prayer points at the wall and the guy is waiting for you to finish and just pay him his money yet in the midst of it you try to kill that israeli and a covenant he's not aware of will arise and defend him what kind of unfair thing is this they farm on a mountain that should not grow yet there is something that makes the earth to increase to them remember that person doesn't believe in jesus yet when god looks at them he sees abraham and sees the covenant the most feared nation on earth a little nation but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of israel israel is my firstborn god has made a covenant with the firstborn the apple of his eyes that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant and it's an everlasting covenant that he has made so when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like i said last week some white missionaries from america just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine say no no we bring you good news of glad tidings jesus has come this is old we present to you jesus and then you embrace the gospel of salvation and you felt that peace in your heart you were happy you were glad i have received jesus two weeks later the missionaries started dying one by one remember they are the ones who got you born again and you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you loved jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven gospels jesus left with the church i'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation the, is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth 
I hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives and look at our dear parents and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of God in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of God with the anointing of the Spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place I'm not talking of another place when I heard that I said this is it this is it I must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look I don't know what you believe but that lady I think there are few people I know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when Jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding so covenant number two I taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority Archbishop Benson Idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the son said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the son said okay i'm coming to see the darkness and when the son came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said i've been you people are wasting my time i've been here for three weeks and i can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the Lord is God speaking to someone tonight There are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints 
there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in Christ let's look at it very quickly number one the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was paul who was speaking um, um which of the church now help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 the bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways deceptive ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of the bible is talking of a kind of deception here are we together now i don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13. it says but these paul is really i mean apostle peter here is really angry and he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive he said but this as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not speak evil of the things that they understand not he says and shall utterly perish in their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not being deceived took them away from the light that would have blessed them the bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of god who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth 
deception so he comes to eve and manipulates eve comes to adam and says adam come let me tell you something did god really say that a b c d and adam said well he said we may freely eat of the fruit eve said this and that and that and then he said no there is something god is hiding from you god is hiding this i hope you know that satan never um, satan never wanted i used to think satan wanted to replace god no no satan didn't want to replace god he wanted to run a parallel government i will be like not i will be the most high the god continue your throne sit there i will also say, i want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word eloha elohim it is plural add me to the godhead that's what he wanted i am i have done too much i hope you know i, I like oh dear i don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but i hope you know when you begin to read jeremiah chapter 4 i, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you you realize that satan was sent as a representative of the love of god to the then civilization and the then creation what jesus represents to our civilization was what lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where god is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan. The first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there. Satan said, okay, God finish and go. And let me come to the garden i'm used to he knew where to found to find eve he never said eve where are you it's god that said adam where are you satan always knows where to find them i know where frail human beings can be found let me tell you every man even from adam was born with the tendency to sin in iniquity jeremiah said did my mother he never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, don't disturb me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remains small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted it, him on three things that, re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from. Jesus, you are hungry. Remember, part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need. So Satan, I mean Jesus, don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger. The power of God is able to turn stones into bread. Do it. And Jesus said no. And Satan found out, okay, I see you are so obsessed with your assignment. You have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom. Next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god why routed the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceived them and placed them there they are my boys 
bow to me and let me just give you their heart instead of routing through the cross and all this pain are you seeing satan now he left jesus for a season he said i'm coming notice he never came directly to jesus again satan for you the next time we see satan coming he's coming to peter remember the goal is to jesus then the next time we see him again judas then the next time in jesus's weakness he now comes and manipulates his mind and jesus for the first time says father is it possible that you take this cup off me and jesus said no nevertheless nevertheless not my way if jesus prayed that prayer the father would have granted him yes because he always hears me jesus said it at the grave of lazarus i thank thee father because you always hear me i ha i had to pray this in open so that they will know i'm not my my open prayer is not an act of unbelief i'm saying it to minister to them i thank thee because you always hear me if jesus stopped at that prayer the father would have said well i cannot be a demon to usurp your will you have chosen to abort redemption so let it be and that would be it he still will be the word but there is no longer fruits of redemption he will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten but thank god he endured and he has now become not just the only begotten but the first begotten of the father we being the proceeds of that salvation and the bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue are we together deception the third way deception can happen ephesians 5 verse 6 god we have to run we have to run at least let's let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray let no man deceive you with what help me so the third instrument of deception is vain words you can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate i can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of god on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now that the word of god is able to establish you the bible declares that i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so the word of god is able to give us wisdom wisdom number two the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control the first realm the realm of deception thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan like we shared in luke 22 give us luke 22 and verse 31 this was the encounter that jesus had with peter remember luke 22 the lord said to simon watch this simon remember was a disciple of jesus 
although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of god alone should create some system of immunity yet satan penetrated all of that and came again through simon the chiefest of the apostles are we together he was forbidding jesus that jesus should not talk about death no jesus don't talk about the cross and everything and jesus was said oh simon you love me so much you are such a kind man jesus looked at him and said no this is not kindness this is this is the devil wants to use he's taking advantage now watch this are you seeing how manipulation and control happens it takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly and satan can buy into it to become what you if you have compassion satan can use compassion to deceive you if you have intelligence satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you here he takes advantage of peter's compassion peter thought he was being sympathetic to jesus jesus you've done too much don't talk about death i'm going to miss you what does a good leader do oh I, I, you guys are all wicked people i'm talking of dying and none of you is crying peter come i love you in fact when i when, when as i'm going to heaven you will receive my mantle for being discompassionate hear what jesus says jesus looks at peter with the tears running from his eyes and says get thee behind me this is jesus why didn't he look at the ground get no 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 he looks at peter get thee behind me simon simon he said satan had desired to do what have you that he may sift you as wheat next verse but i have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he said use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are i, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as i've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love god but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and it's ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and your spirit is leaving the person the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i says you see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is, is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes. Don't blackmail believers just because of this. And again, we prophets and apostles, I think we must be warned in Jesus' name. Because we are the ones who advocate this confusion. Just because you look and see a snake, you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry. He knows he's not a snake. He knows he's not a fool. He loves God with all his heart. He is surprised that he was manifesting. And he's ashamed. And he, he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall. So that means they are sound. Not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head. Are we together? God bless you. So the realm of the mind, manipulation and control. This is where Satan sways our thoughts. Ah. 
it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth it is believers that are quick to look at men of god apostle joshua selman how can a young man like that have crowd like be careful lord we are in the end times and you will think you are being sincere are we together now manipulation it is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much he now uses his face to you in a dream watch this somebody that loves you and is praying for you maybe your mother now appears and you go and say apostle prophet i saw my mother with a knife and he said i've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch and all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village and your mother said oh my dad so don't tell me anything so you are the one behind my pain manipulation both the counselor and the counselee both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control are we together now very important satan can manipulate you the moment he sees that you are get you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the lord he withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying you will take you will take the withdrawal to be victory established then you will now say because he knows that you never see god until there is trouble so the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the lord you will see a temporary victory and you say ah that's it the dream has stopped and so you continue in that low level and think you are safe whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter is god giving us intelligence tonight manipulation do you know brothers and sisters i look at my own life let me be honest with you i look at my own life i look at my background and brothers and sisters i'm shocked at how well meaning my life was and how satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines with theories with all kinds of things it's amazing sometimes i sit down and i listen to men of god sometimes i attend conferences and i see people and i see very well-meaning believers but i am afraid sometimes even very anointed i am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations the very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation There are all kinds of manipulations if i get up today for instance as a man of god and i believe that every other church and every other ministry in zaria is wasting god's time except me that state is already a sign of progress in an attack are you getting what i'm saying if i believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria and that every other person especially our fathers our reverends here and there they are just talkatives wasting God's time the fact that I could accept that imagination why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control are you getting what I'm saying now dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack dishonor to constituted authority we are all men of God there's nothing you have that I don't have is a sign of this level of attack listen very carefully the pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this you will not know oh i come and i say look I've, I've fasted for 40 days mr man how long do you fast he said well i managed to do two like <laughs> love is like this guy you are still i pray that god will bring you up oh i'm going to go and pray and you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality it could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you but it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind 
then on the other hand you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say look all you guys need you see you see wisdom is profitable to direct this prayer prayer is, is all nonsense you are just praying stupid that state too is another version of manipulation are you getting the point now yes the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again I believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this I think the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery Babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaking the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment I want to think about my life, an alert comes. One million. Rabba. That means this thing is in place. If it was not in place, I mean, where did the devil stop it from the bank? Let's be very careful. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has. I'm not against abundance now. I hate poverty. We all do as a ministry. Are we together? But at the same time, we must be careful. There are many people whose lives are not all right just because they have a lot of money they just turn and look at other poor it's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed even if he's free he will not agree because the whiplash of the uh what they call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right even when he has been delivered there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing mark chapter 5 the madman in gadara do you know why he was a madman in fact he was not even a madman we only call him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization? Imagine the war. This one is saying, cut this stone. And so he just remained. And notice how restful he was. The Bible says he will sit down in a cave quietly. They came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. It's a long reading. We'll find somewhere to stop. Verse 2. Let's continue. And when he was come out of the ship, listen carefully, immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what? You see that was not a madman. It was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones 6 
but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him now you would think that worship is homage no this is Satan at work deception this, uh, let me tell you this when Satan knows you will overpower him his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you remember in the book of Acts these are the holy men of God they have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day Paul goes will say since we can't see Paul we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you it's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually but when he saw Jesus he ran and worshipped him verse 6 and he cried out with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high God I adjure thee by God Satan speaking through a man I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not eight oh dear I'm sorry Mark is not giving us the context I'm looking for anyway we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there one of the synoptics that talks about the legions I thought that was where it will lead us for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit Mark gave us an epistle of one spirit but we know I think um ah okay Mark leaves it there too and he asks him what is thy name identify yourself now there has been a debate about this i don't i'll talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you we'll address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking we are many multiple spirits can exist within the same entity strange so your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you another spirit many spirits legions we are many verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country this is another discussion how can demons beg and say okay apostle cast us out of here but let's not go outside of new extension we have been in new extension for a long time look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have they know that there is jurisdiction of their influence and saying if you take us out of that jurisdiction there is no basis for dominion so leave us within our prescribed territory we will leave the individual you are interested in but leave the territory this is a message that many of us need to learn so it can leave you but is still around you waiting for a moment when you will grant access again Jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man so demons can leave men let it not surprise you that demons leave men the Bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation it will tell itself I will return back to my house you are born again he's still calling you his house you see how tenacious Satan is my house and he comes and finds it swept clean but empty then it doesn't enter alone it gathers seven greater than itself look at that system of coordination seven greater than itself and returns and they comfortably stay in you so that the end of that man is even worse don't miss the next part three of this i will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete and i'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, I'm already going ahead of myself I want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when I teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong 
the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on, and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to Christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old Jewish practice called salt covenant uh, the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of scripture reveals to us starts from the Adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam 
so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to live You will be blessed with a lot of balance um, um there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as i just said that thing, many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you're now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from an attempt to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say hey, to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet rise up please you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign
your majesty I be we declare your majesty sing it as we enthrone his majesty over all the works of darkness One minute we are going to pray just two prayer points i like you to lift up your voice and declare that in the name of jesus i'm walking in the experience of the victory the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the death of jesus the victory of his triumphant resurrection lift your voice and declare Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. Lord, I declare, Lord, I declare, complete victory over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I know that I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel, the man, had died. But Abel, the blood, was speaking. And he cried. And God himself had to say, no, something is happening. Although the man had died, but the blood is still speaking. I'd like you to engage the blood. And say, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood. I invoke the advocacy of the blood. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. Declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek, higher than the 
Aaronic priesthood. Higher than the priesthood of Noah. We declare in the name of Jesus. Shabakato Sabarata. The blood speaks. The blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. The Bible says, listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. Something is happening here. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue. Remember, I'll be sharing with you. Every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun. The sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity demonically on earth. Without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity. Until light returned, then Satan now returned with his activity too. When there was, all through the period of darkness, the only entity we see is the Spirit of God. We never hear of any demon jumping. The moment the sun was withdrawn, and the moon was withdrawn, so the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Witchcraft cries only with the sun. That's why Jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healing. Thou shall not be. He said the son shall not smite you. That means for as long as there is sun and there is moon, I can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you. That will tap the power of the sun to spare you away. Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember all of them are lights. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this. Jacob said so. Me. Jacob called himself the sun. So I will bow. And my wife who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you Jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week I'll share with you how God delivered me you know I've been telling you what I went through but I've not shared with you how I came out this is what I want to share with you Kai look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder That you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say I dare you I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him I'm happy his name is called Joshua Hi. <laughs> watch this watch this every time God wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage hezekiah was about to die and when god turned his life he said as a sign i will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you Joshua looked at the sun and said Jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified because they have done something 
even with the sun and the moon and he said son there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light sun stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden Jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in Jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun Jericho was close and they were afraid the, na the nation of Israel were not fighting they are they, the Bible said they were close none went out none entered they said we're in trouble the sun and the moon you will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say oh it doesn't matter and all of a sudden you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start please be interested in what i'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries there is what can subdue causes yes it is the blood of jesus yes it is all of this but the dynamics of that operation brothers and sisters the powers that hold africa are powerful don't trivialize it jesus is above all i don't in any way demean the power of god if i did i would not be standing here if i did this koinonia will not be standing here if i'm faking what i tell you i will not open my mouth to declare this because that means i won't be able to sleep this night too who can stand against the lord no one can no one will still on that exercise of night prayers i know some of you have not been doing it don't do it as a ritual but i want you to receive grace to do it with understanding forget about what happens just do what i ask you to do it doesn't matter whether even if you are praying and a demon appears. don't worry you are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of god conquer the realm of the flesh are we together we are going to receive grace to pray but I want to pray for you right now please just help anyone under the anointing just two minutes and then we are done in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I, my God I'm seeing a sword right now I declare every hold of darkness shabakato salata even in this series help them jesus look at what is happening there in the name of jesus you know my voice i was once your victim but tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of david by the message of god i declare right now in the name of jesus everyone here under the sound of my voice who is under any kind of siege right now be free in the name of jesus 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 every family 
under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie. Shabaka toka sata, embreke toka shabala kata, reke toka tosh, shabas kata sata, rakato shabariata kata. In the name of Jesus, fire. I'm seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing from heaven. Shaboko tos kabariata kata, man takoto shegetegete, embreke te loko shabarika. I'm praying for you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I cause the plague of witchcraft. I cause the plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Every voice speaking against everyone's destiny the Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us the Bible says he nailed it to the cross I declare and I decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the Father I cause every power that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ I reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual over every family I command a reversal now in the name of Jesus and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession let me pray for you everything that must enter your hand the open doors that the blood of Christ release. Help them, please. Everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit, God has shown you dreams that you are a possessor. God has shown you dreams. Your children, your breakthrough, your lifting, your speed, your job, your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. And I pray for you. The Bible says when you catch a thief, he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing. Can I speak restoration? Let me tell you, there are many of us you have lost things some you have lost time Masha Makata Lekotos Kabata Joshua said son go back move go back I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus I prophesy as one sent in the name that is above all names everything the devil took away from you I command a restoration now I command a restoration now Whatever you have lost in time, I speak to you. Between today and Friday coming, I pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer. May my God, the God of Jeshurun, arise and surprise you. Arise and surprise you. We call him Ebenezer, the helper of Israel. I declare, oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. First King 17 from verse 7 or oh, really verse 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 1 to 1 to 6 first king 17 we read um, or if we do not have time 17 and it came to pass after a while he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain read on and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I was saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people and there was nothing. And then, Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience luxury today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language, sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and 
still rise the lighter you are the higher you fly are we together sacrifice praise can be a sacrifice your seed can be a sacrifice your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost listen let me repeat myself there is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river. And just said Lord just protect this guy and God said that son that you gave us a seed I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them whenever you are afraid of losing things you open the door for losses that which I have feared most has come upon me there are many of us you are so afraid of losing things that you you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last anytime good things happen you are careful a brother comes to propose to you and you are saying well i said yes but the truth is i've not said yes first i've had 10 people break my heart that's what happened to the woman who met jesus six husbands five men shattered her heart the sixth one is not even her husband and jesus came so she was careful and jesus said me i'm not like the rest though. 
and gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your dreams. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that would bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. Said, ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non deliverance, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. 
for you to ever experience restoration there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life the prophetic the prophetic either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect you have to understand what I'm teaching you without an encounter with a prophetic grace a prophetic office or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God there is no restoration it's impossible second scripture Psalm 119 verse 49 I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49 it says remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope give us an amplified I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me break to I believed it and he said remember the word the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me that's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham Isaac Jacob the God of Oyedipo so there is it's not some religious you know whatever it is it is a system of invoking the personal covenant God aside from the old and the new testament God has personal covenants with men till today God can enter a covenant with a man a family because of something that was done and say look whoever does certain things connected to this I will bless you God had a covenant with Abraham listen and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham a sad story later happened and then Ishmael came out when Ishmael came out the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness two of them were crying only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven why the Bible says God had the voice of the young lad a child is crying the mother is crying only one voice is heard in heaven because God said Abraham you and anybody and anything that comes out of you is not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not he is bound to it it is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing remember the last scripture Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But by looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. 
listen. This is not revelation. It is a God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predetermined counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen, you are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21, I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happening going on here. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? 
someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone or question one and then comes and the word comes and the result comes out and is in 4.8 oh please brothers and sisters we are intelligent people but we are also spiritual never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life the same way you are seated here and say apostle can God do it brothers and sisters he can look at my life look at this ministry the word of God can God cure that sickness yes he can I repeat yes he can can God turn around my captivity some of you are not sick but what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem God can still turn it around God can turn it around in the name of Jesus God can turn it around the Lord declared and said I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration I truly believe every word of God and I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things compress time for people call back things please believe it believe it believe it I am a testimony I've seen God bless people overnight overnight ha, he said rejoice not over me my enemies sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say God I have served you I didn't kill anybody I didn't rob anybody why is my life like this then God tells you locate the power of prophecy locate the power of prophecy some of you didn't want to come tonight you can come and still look and say wow what an interesting service or you can come and say lord it is within your power to change this situation why should we pro prolong it it's within your power it's within your power you've seen the testimonies we never announce anything here that is not verified You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help, my father has died, my mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm sitting Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be alive. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. He said, weep not. When the boom is open, tears will stop. God
God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. Is able to restore, and let me tell you something God can restore fast, He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night, God said, That's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart. Believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already communicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call.
things I'm about to pray. But you saw that I was just walking around. Let me tell you something with prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little crazy, foolish prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
the spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you are going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing. And Satan wanted to rain an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment, may that anointing come right.
past who came before, a past job, a past breakthrough, a past wife, a whatever it is, has stopped many people from moving forward. Every time you see success, it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came. So you are even afraid of it. No. No. You were given 500,000 and you went and bought goods for your business. Then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. I once again separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. It goes and goes forever. It goes and goes forever. Hallelujah. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family, and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. You. Your salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, sir. Where are you from? Odo, Odo State. Odo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Odo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes, sir. And because
Jesus can sing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Yes. That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally, right? Who is Lakeup? Section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for the sick. Augustus, change the story. Jesus, something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my brother. You don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Where is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. That's what stand up. That's what they told you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. 
I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. They need the mercy of God. Huh? And for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. A very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. I want everybody to look at this brother very well, know his face, because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC Kefi. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kevin. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been there. I was together in your program. In soup, two days program, you came at KF. Oh, you were there the, at yes, the meeting. You were part of the committee people yes. there. Yes. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power. I wonder this in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The person is coming. You want something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi I'm State. Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. God said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. I 
I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the God that I serve lift you. May the God that I serve honor you. Your help is in Abuja. We will locate you and help you and bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabala Katabalata. Come and receive your miracle, my dear. Come. Let it end now. Of Jesus, captivity comes to an end. Come on, carelessly. You are from where? Why are you here? of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come no woman. There's no woman. call the person's name now huh? no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son this is the one here in the okay you're standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with a child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You yes, believe. What's her name? Her name is Adam Alisa. Adama. Adama. Yes, the name of Jesus become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Oh, I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? 
you love God but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Our husband. Yes. We are from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aiki, she made it. Yeah, Nana Kano. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad diabetes, fibroid, and, um, and, and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power. Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverance is happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. Fix 
speaks against your life. In the day and in the night, he's speaking against you. I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars in the name of Jesus. physical rings on your hand physical rings then it will disappear who is that there's someone here like that please quickly let me pray for you don't be embarrassed i want to pray for you the lord just gave me a revelation sometimes you look at your hand and you see you think it's a vision rings like ring on your hand you started seeing it in your dreams but now physically sometimes you see it whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing, this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands in the name of 
Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking, you know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside inside please if you are here don't be embarrassed i want to help you end this i know there are many people but there is a specific person god is talking to me about let's just flow as the holy spirit to speak in please that gentleman i want you to come out here and i want to lay my hands and end it you are tired of it but you can't stop no matter what you do that's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny where are you let's appreciate him Look at me. Jesus said, He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. Are still coming let's give them one more minute since god is already talking to them now let's just take advantage of the anointing here apostle i don't take it all the time still join them you take it the most important thing is that you take it even if it's not all the time you take it join them and let god help you look at me brothers and sisters i'm your friend i love you with all my heart like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. 
use carries cough syrup snuff it till you are almost dying pass out and come back again and still do it and then others sell that that leaf that they tie you collect it smoke it and all of that look at me I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way are we together now we are only we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God I'm agreeing with you most people complain most people gossip about you I'm not gossiping about you I want to help you Koinonia as a family loves you now listen let me challenge all of you please after this prayer huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month you are welcome to prayer department for the next one month praise God so this is how we do it here I would deceive you that once I just pray for you you go back and meet those friends they will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them and then before you know it you will go back into those things one of the laws of of influence is atmosphere you open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you so after I pray for you um, ushers what will happen is you can get their names and their details will fall into the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there you need to keep praying you need to keep building your spirit you need to be taught the word of God and by God's grace we are helping you some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come you will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ some of you here the ladies you may be the wives of great men of God evangelists and apostles there is no body there's no such thing as hopelessness to him that is joined to the living there is hope stretch your hands saints of God if you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. trouble for somebody is not the way it happens God can help you and God can bless you in the name of Jesus I set you free if I've not touched you just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands upon you I command that spirit to leave you I command that devil to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ I command that devil to leave you I cause you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. pray for any association that will not let you serve God I command those associations from today let them be a dissociation between you and them in the name of Jesus God bless you let's appreciate them very quickly now we are going to begin to pray have I prayed for them have I prayed for you this guy you are going to be a man of God this brother this gentleman bring him this young man is going to be a man of God guidance and mentorship there is a call of God upon your life huh? that we and whatever it is that is stealing the call we cause it now in the 
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are watching. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you have not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. 
want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. And we still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Let the angel of the Lord spread it. Now arise, O Lord. in the name of Jesus those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success Lord turn around age long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives, 
in the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. Right now, take it right now, take it right now, take it right now. Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, she put those to go to Patarata. Come back to life now in the name of Jesus. Every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. 
destroy your prayer life so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I found those coals to come back alive. I found those coals of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to throw your blessings to your life now to throw your blessings to your life now. Listen, Noah did not go to look for the animals. He just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command, I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time. It only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service. Let there be strange testimonies of restoration. Strange testimonies of restoration. Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death 
there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death it always comes like a circle looms over territory and takes the life of people i declare let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family i cause accidents i cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again thank you for lifting Everyone stand, any of you of those. Let's honor this altar call quickly. Help, help those under the anointing. There are people here standing and saying, man of God, I want to make it right with Jesus. Some of you gave your hearts to him, but for some reason things began to go haywire. And you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Those coming from outside, please. Protocol, help them. Clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ. Overflow. One, two, three, four. Everywhere, please. Quickly. Three. Three. coming please double up double up rush rush run and come we're out of time but this is a decision that is eternal come and encounter jesus god bless you come and encounter the power of god come and have a fresh start with him he that did not withhold his only son but offered him freely how much more with him shall he give us all things keep coming three four Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly, say this passionately, say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight i've heard your word and i believe in you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that jesus is lord over my life i believe that god raised him from the dead and i declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before 
I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.